I have a confession to make. I'm a bit discouraged. Get your coffee. I've been thinking a lot lately about how we are to respond to the authorities that govern us. This has become a more challenging discussion in the last year, I'm sure you would agree. It is such a divisive conversation among a lot of the people that I know that so much so that I find myself sometimes not wanting to even broach the subject. In one of the Apostle Paul's letters to the Corinthians, he asks an interesting rhetorical question. Is Christ divided? The Christians in Corinth had divided themselves into factious, tribalistic groups within the church. There were some that said, I'm of Paul, and others that said, I'm of Peter, and then more that said, I'm of Apollos, and of course there was the real holy people that said, I'm of Christ. And in response to this factious, tribalistic, and carnal thinking, Paul asked the question, is Christ divided? The right answer is, of course, no. But we are by nature factious and tribalistic. And our tribalism is, at least in my lifetime, it's at an all-time high. Years after Paul wrote his letter to the Corinthians, he wrote to the church at Ephesus, and Paul would teach the Christians there to endeavor, that is to work hard to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. And to do this, Paul said that We have to walk worthy of the calling with which we were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering or patience, bearing with one another in love. And another English translation of those words, bearing with one another in love, says, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. I don't see a lot of that going on right now. And it is terribly discouraging. Unity within our nation is clearly not possible at this moment. And unity within the church is far from a reality. And when I'm talking about unity, I'm not talking about conformity or some mushy ecumenicalism. I'm talking about humbly and gently working for unity within local churches and within networks of churches that were once joined together as brothers. I, with a number of my peers, have watched in in disgust, really, as networks and associations that once brought us together are now divisively crying, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Peter, I'm of Christ. And then in the last 12 months, that has amplified The volume has gone up such that we are now in a positive feedback loop that is seemingly unending. It has become hard to have a conversation with someone without being subjected to shibboleth purity tests on issues of vaccines and recalls and shutdowns, red team or blue team, Wall Street Journal or New York Times, right, left, go go back and forth constantly. More than 20 years ago, I... I sensed a call to pastoral ministry through the words of the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 4, just a few verses after Paul said, endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. He said, and Jesus gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up or the edifying of the body of Christ until we all come to the unity of the faith 
and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect or mature man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be as children tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body is joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causing growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Jesus called and ordained ministers to equip and train Christians to be in unity. And if you bear the title pastor and your words are stirring up strife and division, you might want to hit pause and rethink that one. Just a few months after I sensed that call to the ministry from Ephesians chapter 4, more than 20 years ago, a dear friend, a fellow pastor, gave me a book, a book that would ultimately come become one of my favorite books called A Tale of Three Kings. It is a study in brokenness from the lives of Kings Saul, David, and David's son Absalom in the Old Testament. And at one point, the author, Gene Edwards, he imagines a conversation between an unnamed character, and a wise sage. And at one point, the old wise sage says these words. In the spiritual realm, those who lead rebellions have already proven, no matter how grandiose their words or angelic their ways, that they have a critical nature, an unprincipled character, and hidden motives in their hearts. Frankly, they are thieves, they create dissatisfaction and tension within the realm and then either seize power or siphon off followers. They use their followers to found their own dominions. Such a sorry beginning built on the foundation of insurrection. No, God never honors division in his realm. Something to think about. We'll see you next time.